just, I'll keep an eye on time and we'll just go from there. Does that sound good? Does anyone have any questions? I remember um, thinking that thinking that it was just normal to use drugs because life wasn't that enjoyable otherwise. <laughs> and I was completely wrong because life is miserable when you're using drugs, but you're so messed up that you don't realize it. One of my very, very close friends, I remember his dad was a blue collar worker and he was injured on the job. And I remember looking in his medicine cabinet one day and finding like morphine and Percocet, which is oxycodone, uh, propoxifen, and uh, Xanax and Halcyon and <laughs> turning to my friend and saying, do you have any idea what you have here? And he was completely clueless. And I gave him a handful of pills and said, eat these and tell me how you feel in a little while. And that like marked the beginning of our love affair with pills, but more importantly, opiates or opioids, the whole deal. It starts out like a party in the beginning and then as it progresses, it just becomes this like this monster that you can't control. A lot of crazy stuff happens to your brain when you're out using drugs, and a lot of healing begins when you stop. I've been to treatment centers before. Usually it was to shake charges or, um, you know, to dry out. Back to basics or B2B is different in a lot of ways. I started Back to Basics as a result of, I just saw that there was this vacuum not being filled in, in the industry you know, of addressing addiction and, and hopefully recovery. There was this heavy medical model or a more lighter version of, of addressing the issue with not a lot of supervision and follow-up and really formulate a model that, that could be more comprehensive and have a chance over that longer term period to plant seeds and more of a buy-in. You know, we, we live here in Flagstaff, it's a mountain town, but I can remember when I was drinking and, and being a young guy, not even going to the Grand Canyon. Um, I think that that was a, a huge example of, of how compromised and insulated I had become um, in my own personal life, even though Sedona was just 30 miles down the road or the Grand Canyon is about an hour away. Um, I hadn't accessed everything that was available to me. So once I got sober and I'd rafted the Grand, through the Grand Canyon and I'd been you know, skiing every year and, and just engaged in, in the resources and wilderness around me, it was a no-brainer. Like this is a healing opportunity. Um, it's, it's not just theory. And, and so you know, when I was piecing things together for the program, it had been one, once again, a no-brainer. Like, why aren't we introducing more of that to these young men in the recovery process? And we are working on a daily basis. There's no holidays, there's no weekends, you know, f for, or breaks. You know, it's a 24-7 program, and it's essentially two programs in one. You know, we're half the week there in their outdoor adventure schedule, leaving on Sundays and coming back on Tuesday or Wednesdays, and then the other half of the week is more of a traditional model or schedule where they're seeing their individual therapist, they've got group therapy, um, they're going to the gym, they've got their kung fu classes, they've got their culinary classes, they have ongoing community service projects. So we continue to give them on a daily basis an opportunity to hold themselves accountable and to engage and execute responsibilities in order for them to move on to their next steps. And, and also they have a community that's counting on them and, and hopefully that they can count on to continue to support their growth. You can have a full life. You can have something that's um, definitely more beneficial and less detrimental than, than the drugs and alcohol and the jails and the institutions and the fines and probation, all that stuff that comes along with that lifestyle of active using. B2B, I mean, it's essentially, it's, it's like a fraternity with no drugs or alcohol. It's a bunch of, you know, young adult males living together, having to clean house together and cook food together and do daily living tasks while also trying to be sober and not kill each other. People just need time and a good, safe place to change. And, and usually, usually people end up wanting the best for themselves and for others. Um, and B2B 
helps facilitate for sure. And that's really what, what kind of trickles down to all components of the program, you know, is that we're, we're giving these guys an opportunity to engage in things that are realistic within their reach, life that's within their reach. I really, I hope that um, people can kind of change the way that they view addiction. You know, the, the perception is alcoholics or addicts are the bearded guy with the brown paper bag living under the bridge um, that's pretty much crazy. And that's, that's false. That's completely wrong. Um, addicts look like me. Addicts look like the guy under the bridge. And they look like everything in between. And it, like, it spans all races, religions, whatever. You know, <clears throat> nobody's exempt from this thing. I know from being one myself and from working with these guys that they're, we're not inherently bad people. We just got this bad problem and we got to fix it. I didn't really have, have any hope for anything to get better. And you go through multiple days and you continue doing the right thing and suddenly uh, things don't look so bleak. And um, I don't know. I, I can't honestly put my finger on exactly what it is, but somewhere along the way you begin loving yourself. That's pretty cool.